Hey everybody, my name is Pej. We come on every single Tuesday, right around noontime. I always have special guests in the recovery world. We talk about anything and everything that's recovery related or lack thereof. Welcome to Peggy's Recovery Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to Peggy's Recovery Corner. Today, I'm here with my very special friend, Paxton Dickerson. He is the owner and founder of Mechanics of oh. Recovery. <laughs> uh, so, t Paxton's very special to me. Uh, I, I, I met him in Orange County probably many years ago. We both worked in the treatment uh, field. I would sometimes be working at some kind of treatment center mm -hmm. and, and I'd be walking through and I'd see him um, in his classrooms or like in a classroom setting um, doing what he does. And I'll have him talk more about that in a second. But whenever I would see Paxton, my man's always dressed to the nines. I'm talking like Paxton is basically the Ricky Ricardo of the of the recovery community, right? Oh, I don't come see. on! <laughs> it's, it's, I like that. Always dressed well, right? I like that. Just a, I think it's more of like a, a Ricky Ricardo mixed with like Versace, right? I'll take I mean, look at that shirt right there. That's that's the business right there. <laughs> so Paxton, um, a couple of things real quick before we get into uh, your organization and what you do. There. I want to know about you. Uh, first of all. Who is Paxton Dickerson? Ah. Where, where are you from originally? Originally, I'm from the East Coast. I was uh, born in New Hampshire, and I uh, grew up in upstate New York, mm -hmm. home of Xerox and Bosch and Lom and Kodak, rest in peace. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, let's see, I uh, lived in Philly for a while, Northfield, Minnesota, and a year in Mexicali, all bad. That was all bad. They used to call me Tequache. What, 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 if you what, speak yeah. Spanish, tequache means they, hey tequache. That means a dirty little rodent, like a <laughs> like a possum. Oh man! I thought it was a compliment, and then my friend said, "Hey Paxton, they're calling you a rat." Yeah, they're, I'm like, oh, they're calling you names. Am, am I gonna die? <laughs> 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 okay, so then, so basically, so it was back east. Yes. You said you were in Minnesota for a minute. Yes. And then you went back to Rochester. Yep. And then, then what? Basically, I was failing at life, uh -huh. and uh, they used to call me the Fresh Packs of Pasadena because it was just like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh -huh. They put me on a bus, three day, three and a half day bus ride from Rochester, New York, to Pasadena uh -huh. to live with my oldest uncle because my dad had passed away, mm -hmm. and my uncle said, you know, bring him out to me, I'll make a man out of him. Well, does that mean that when you were still back east, were you messing around with drugs and alcohol? Yes, sir. Okay. I've been using since twelve, going on thirteen. Okay. When did it become a problem for you? Twelve, going on thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we, I mean, I didn't know. But, I mean, we won't get into everything that you. Well, what did you like to use? My, uh, I, I like to drink. Okay. I like to powder cocaine. Oh, cocaine! I like to put PCP on gunpowder and okay. snort it. Okay. Like a Somali pirate. All right. Uh, you know, and because why not? Uh huh. People say. Why on gunpowder? And I go, but, but why PCP? I mean, like the questions just start. Right. <laughs> like, right. Come on now. Uh -huh. uh, anything, opium. Right. Uh, I, I like. I didn't like too much, too much paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. You know. So I, I. I mean, I didn't get into needles just because it was something else to carry. Right. And to lose. Okay. And something that would stop me from using if I didn't have it. Right. And I'm just not into that. That makes sense. Like, I need to like air. So, so what, when you landed in the big old city of Pasadena, how right. old were you? Twenty six. 26 years old, so that means... No, I'm sorry. No, that's a lie. No, I got sober at 26. Okay. So when I was in Pasadena, I must have been 21. Two. Oh, so yeah. you got here at 21 and you were still running and gunning oh, yes, sir. out in California. I shat all over Pasadena. Okay. And L.A. Okay. And Altadena. Oh, and all that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I... Who knows? I might have been Remember, here. I told you this is a free-for-all. That means you got to talk about what happened to the Hollywood Hills. Sure, <laughs> sure. I hear you. Uh, see, see? That's what I get for talking. <laughs> we don't need to get into all that. Ah, we so, will. so between 25, 21 and 26, yes. you were still you were still on the grind. I ran a... Uh, I uh, hosted a rap show on TV. Okay. I ran a Hollywood Athletic Club downtown. Okay. Uh, worked with my uncle. Uh, ran an escort service. Okay. Managed a restaurant. Okay. Under a bridge. Under a bridge. Eventually under a bridge. Yeah. So you ended up under a bridge. Most definitely. I was living out of my car for okay. a lot of that. As a homeless like I, man. Yes. I would like literally go to the dry cleaners, mm -hmm. get my stuff, hang it up, mm -hmm. get out of my car, act like I would, came from a house. Mm -hmm. When I would party, like uh, I did casting. I did a lot of casting for movies. Uh, okay. Like Men's Society, Danger Mind, stuff like that. Yes. And uh, people would think I was trying to party. Mm -hmm. But honestly, what I was doing was I was trying to figure out who was going to party longest. Right. 
so I can attach myself to them. Because mm-hmm. if not, then I got to find a park to park it. Well, absolutely. Like, so so okay. So during the time that you were doing all the casting and working in in, in the the faint like it, yeah, name it, drop, name drop, name drop, name drop, the glitz and the glam and all that. All that, all that glitters and gold you were using actively, yes. obviously, right? Yes. Correct. Yes. Am I not? Didn't have a driver's license. Okay. No registration insurance. Okay. No rent. Just ridiculous. I lived in the YMCA for a while. Uh, in California. Yes. Okay. All right. Stone walls, bars on the window. How back. long were you living under the bridge? I, I lived under a bridge for a good solid year. Okay. And then, uh, what would go through your mind as a homeless man living under the bridge? Especially because you listen. I, I, the Paxton I know, like, you ain't dumb. No. You didn't come from poverty. No. You came, like, you're were, you were edu- you educated, right? Yes. To a certain, ex- to a yeah. certain degree, you were educated. Oh, most definitely. So what was uh, a common thought that would pass through your mind in living under that bridge? Like, as what a homeless. What the hell? Like, what the hell, right? I would I would watch people walk by me, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, I panhandle, maybe. And uh, whether they gave me money or not, mm-hmm. they didn't see me. Right. No one asked me, hey, what do you think about the game? Or, you know what I mean? Right. And so I would get weird. Right. Because you're going to see me. Right. So I'd take off my clothes, yell, scream, you know, you're going you're gonna to see me. You just want pay to att- hey. Pay attention. I'm here. Don't help right. me, though, but just piss off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, but I always had a scam going, uh, you know, an agenda, and a little right. plot. And, you know, honestly, People would say, Paxton, if you were making so much money, why didn't you just get like a hotel room or an apartment? Mm-hmm. And that's an awesome question. I don't really have an answer for that. I understand. You know, the reason that I ask you this sure. question is because I've experienced homelessness. Right. Seven months of homelessness. I, but I'm Persian. Like, we're not raised. Uh, I'm not yeah, homeless not material. Plan. Right. I'm not jail material. Right. No. I'm not. Uh, but for some no. reason, I kept ending up in jails, institutions, near death experiences, and homelessness, and sometimes shelters. I was a little bit too. I was. I was a little too bougie for like Charlie Street down in Costa Mesa. Right. Right. But but still, like uh, there was like this this grandiose ego maniac with an inferiority complex yes. that just I I didn't want to ask for help. So I want to know what was your breaking point? Like what made you? What like, what happened that you got sober? So. I was, I finally, eventually, you know, I, I, I destroyed all the, my little plots and plans. Mm-hmm. Fired, quit, you know, the ruin, ruin, ruin. Mm-hmm. And so I eventually went, okay, okay, uncle, you always wanted me to come work for you, I'll work for you. Right. So I'm under his nose now, so he's seeing mm-hmm. what's going on. Right. And I'm looking nuts. I mean, I got an afro like this. Right, right. I got handlebars, I got a nice thick handle. I look nuts. You know what I mean? I, I, what, what year was this? The, 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 the 2000 into 2001. Like, I couldn't have looked crazier if I would have tried to look crazy. Like, okay. I, I, okay. It's like it was a thing. Right. How do I look weird? All right, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I, I messed up. Um, I was supposed to do this. I was supposed to walk. Um, they were doing a big ceremony. Right. Because uh, my cousin's mother mm-hmm. is a congresswoman for Oakland. Oh. And uh, uh, Barbara Lee. Okay. Barbara and uh, Lee. I was supposed to walk her down the stairs. Uh-huh. Everyone else had a normal job, like right. talk to this person, do this, do that, and they're like, "Can you, can you walk her down the stairs? Can right. you handle that?" Yeah. And so, and I'm drunk. Right. I, I honestly, I don't remember being drunker than that, like because mm-hmm. there's an open bar. Right. And I'm trying to hang, and I'm like leaning up against the wall, and so these big different stroke stairs that wrap around the building, mm-hmm. and I'm supposed to walk her down, and she says, "Go get me some water." Right. So I run. And you would have to try to get your feet underneath the wire mm-hmm. that was electric taped to the floor. Right. But I did on accident. Connected to a tripod with a speaker. Speaker leans over. I grab it at the bottom. It swings around. A big slit hits the wall. Mm-hmm. Big slit of marble slips off the wall, crashes on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's eyes on me. Right. And my uncle, God bless him, he was not surprised. Right. He was not angry. Right. He wasn't sad. He did this. Like, of course, that's what you're Typical. Doing. Typical. Yeah. Checks out. Yeah, exactly. Right on. Well done. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> so then, you know, blew up my face. Right. He said, look, I want you to go into the Army for two years. Well, I want you to go to this treatment center right. for 28 days, mm-hmm. the Army for two years, right. then come back and work for me, and we can go on from there. I got to know. What, what was the treatment center? 222 West Fall Road, Anaheim, California, 92805, Oasis Treatment Center, 991 Hope, 4673. The good old Oasis. Yes. You went to Oasis in Orange County, California. I went to Oasis. 
Yeah. He became a house manager, mm -hmm. became an intern counselor, okay. ran their detox, became a clinical supervisor, well, wait, wait, and then executive director. You became an intern counselor, meaning you were going to school at the time of being a house manager? Yes. Okay, that's and good. Then, to become a counselor? To become a counselor. Where did you go to college? No, I, I did like these side classes. Okay, Back the then, side classes? Yeah, it was like Dr. Ruth Matheson, CCDC. I remember class. Dr. Ruth Matheson. I yep. remember. Yeah, okay. Yep. Okay. So, and then now let's get into the mechanics of recovery. Mm -hmm. How did that originate? So, at this treatment center, mm -hmm. counselors have caseloads okay. and their one on one clients and all that. Mm -hmm. The one thing no one wanted to do was education. Okay. 11 o'clock education class was a throwaway class. Right. Show a film, read a poem. That's usually how it is in rehab. Right. I mean, who the hell wants to sit like for seven days sober and learn about the front cortex? cortex and like, Come on. How many Native Americans drank in '86? No one cares. Nobody cares. No one cares. When I was in there, like, show me the secret movie. Right. right? Show me some Michael Beck. Yes. Like, give me some of the I mean, some mm, of the spiritual practitioners, wah, all that stuff. Yeah. Right? That's the type of stuff like this. You know that, that, that yeah, make your like bring the energy into your life, right? right? And that's exactly what like what sat well with me. So you didn't, you didn't. The, the so no one wanted to do it, so I did. So you did, and so you, I did you were it ready so much. to step up and start educating people. I did it so much they thought I was supposed to be doing it. Okay. And then I could only then. Did I you did dress it. like you do now? Yes. Back, back and then I became the only one who did it. Okay. And basically, I got paid mm -hmm. to create my curriculum. Okay unknowing to me right so you know now i have 160 lectures i can do in a row without repeating you know and I, that all happened at that time right at that time and I was you're saying now you've gotten to the point where you can do 160 different lectures yes. that don't sound the same correct this guy's a phenomenon i mean i'm telling you like okay so I, well i don't build anything i don't fix anything so i better do <laughs> I, I went to one of your I went to one of your uh, events. Events, yes. Uh, Thank last you so summer. much. I was it was ready. it was amazing. And when I listened to you, I was like, he's special. He's just a special man. And then I didn't know me from you. That's freaking special. Oh, no, I, I thank you. You know, I I I, I just I got to say, like, what what I loved about you was that. Well, I didn't. You know, I knew you. I have a lot of friendships, right? And and often, like, I'll meet a lot of people. But for me, there's. I live in a black and white world because everybody, uh, you know, surface level friendships. Correct. Like I have a lot of acquaintances, but hey, I, don't, hey. I don't know people deeply, right? right. And then when I go through, the when, when I go that. through life and I and I start to get to know people, uh, if they become colorful for me, if you will, yes. right? If they call me, I'm like, oh, I'm happy to hear from this person. And then with a guy like you, I've been following you. I'm a fan from a distance, right? And like for me, you're like technicolor, right? It's it's special. You're special. Thank so I thought, like when I went to your thing, I, I gotta know Paxton. Like I gotta know him a little more better. Right. Like I want to learn about uh, his history, where he came from. Uh, how many years are you sober right now? Uh, since May second, two thousand one. So a good solid nineteen. I love that. That's amazing. I want to say almost the streets, of, the streets of Pasadena are safer since you got sober for the last nineteen yeah, years. Yeah, they're happy with me. Okay, so now you what? What I really loved, and when I was listening to it, as, as, as I thought, this this dude's like a mystic. Like the the stuff that was coming out of you, I was like, I want, I need to go read more books. I mean, I'm talking like you're a deep spirit. You were, and you were. It wasn't no bullshit. It was like straight up, like good, uh, wholesome. Recovery talk mixed with everything that that you do in your organization, and that that just brought me back to remembering when I first ever encountered you and saw you. It was in passing. It was at some treatment center. It's uh -huh. probably got closed down by right. now. Right. But but I'm walking through and I see this dude just like commanding a, a room, right? Like he, all the all the clients were just enthralled. They're just watching this dude, and I thought he, something about that guy. Like he he he's got a. And, as I, long as I'm entertaining myself, I figure I'm. I know it just ain't the soups. He ain't some charlatan up there, like spitting some shit. Like he's this is real talk. Yes, so, sir. so tell me yes, a little sir. bit more about, re I, about I, the organization. When I was young, mm -hmm. I started off studying sacred geometry when I was very young. Okay, I'd be in my room writing sharks, grass spells, studying mythology. Getting all you were smart. And then, of course, drugs and alcohol were more important. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah I would say out the window. Right. Okay. So then I got sober. And I'm like, wait, hold on. I remember. Yes. I remember this stuff. Right. So now I'm going back at it with a different mind. I'm a Buddha Gnostic okay. uh, by faith. So I'm um, one of those guys. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm a Freemason. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of those guys. Okay. And then, uh, but, but. The, 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 you know, somebody asked me recently. They, they saw your necklace and they're like, 
is he a Mason? Because that's a symbol for the yes, Freemasons. I'm like, okay. Yes, sir. I didn't know. Openly admit it. Good. Great. Yep. Blue okay. Lodge. Okay. <laughs> but so, uh, and so I go in with this stuff, and my, my, my job is to attack, attack it from a different angle. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, like, you know, people talk about the 12 steps. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, clients are like, ugh, the 12 steps. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what the 12 steps are? Mm-hmm. I say, you know what? The, it's a spell. Right. Words combined with an action to mm-hmm. create a result. Okay. Except that this is a spell you cast on yourself. Love it. And only the person that casts a spell can break the spell. Uh-huh. So now Great it's not... description. Now it's not... Ooh, self yeah. help, do yeah. this shit. It's like, oh, wait, I mean, so I'm like a magician? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I can magician. cast a spell upon myself. Right. Oh, I love that. Make it exciting. Yeah. And, and you know, and then make it exciting, mm-hmm. allow it to be exciting, but also, it is exciting. That's right. Absolutely. So, mechanics easy. recovery. Mechanics, um, the inner workings of, mm-hmm. and recovery, something lost, uh, regaining control of something lost, stolen, or given away. Okay. So, I started off in treatments, but now I, I go to hospitals, churches, colleges. Okay. Uh, I, I did a, a group with a bunch of psychologists. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's always recovery compatible, okay. but not always recovery exclusive. Very good. You know. Very good. Because I don't want to let anyone out. I love that. I want, all, I want everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you. So um, how can we get more of Paxton? I mean, how do we get in touch with you? Well, you can uh, call me because mm-hmm. my phone is always on okay. and I don't give a flying rest, but 714-600-3587. Www.mechanicsofrecovery.com website, Instagram, Facebook. You can type in Paxton Dickerson on YouTube. You'll see some of my old lectures. Hey, you know, I, I in this field, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of free services. Right. Um, and what I do is I give people my car mm-hmm. and I say I'm yours. Right. I'm a. You can tap me for whatever. Right. I said now my first question. Is going to be what your sponsors say. Mm-hmm. Don't be roping me into contradicting anybody. Yes. You know what I mean? And I'm not giving you any rides. I'm not loaning you any money. Right. But but I'm there, mm-hmm. you know, to bounce things off of, to change perspective, to help. Um, everything I talk about is about Dharma mm-hmm. because in my head, Superman. Who is Superman? Mm-hmm. Clark Kent. Right. Now, how does Clark Kent pay his rent? He uh, was a reporter. Right. But what was his purpose in life? Mm-hmm. He would never confuse what he did for a living with why he was here. Right. And my job is to get people to find out why they're here. That's right. Like what, 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 what? what? That's real. Oh, I'm sober. Okay, that's cool. Okay. But then what? Right. Right? Like well, at least I'm sober. Well, Jeffrey Dahmer didn't kill somebody every day. That don't move me. I, I don't want, what, what, what are you going to do with that? Well, exactly. And honestly, if you're not going to do anything with it, I'd rather you not have it. Mm-hmm. Ran out of the world, so it doesn't matter what I think, but that's where I stand. Absolutely. And, you know, I think a life without purpose is not a life. It's not. It's just not a life worth living. And sure. I, always, I often tell that to people that I interact with. Is like, have you found your purpose? Like, what? What is your main purpose in life? Like, what is it? Is it you want to be selfish? If that's your purpose, great. Cool. If you want to be uh, selfless, altruistic, go out there and help people. Right. Wonderful. Right. It'll probably make you feel a lot better about yourself. Right. And you know, you have a contagious smile. Thank you. you you have a beautiful personality, and I believe that you found your purpose. I did because these are all the tools. You know, Wolverine, mm-hmm. the X Men. Yeah. He's running around a Canadian forest, naked, stabbing deer and mm-hmm. running with wolves. Right. Right. They gave him a uniform and put him on a plane. Right. Same claws. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to use this. I'm going to use my smile to sell you drugs. To try to sleep with your sister or to get you to pay attention with me trying to help you, but the smile's gonna be there. Mm-hmm. I gotta find a use for this stuff. Right. And I like I, I'm a hustler, I'm a con. I just across the street I know whose car door is open. I saw it. I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. that car door is open. Right. <laughs> right, right. Now either I'm gonna help him uh-huh. or I'm gonna help myself, but I'm gonna notice it. Right. It will be noticed. <laughs> I will see it. Right. <laughs> you know, so I hopefully I do things that help the world and help myself and you know, don't give me you're helping a lot of people, Paxton. I know this about you. You know, you're a good man. You're a special man, and I, I'm honored to call you my friend. And I want right to, back and at I you, want to sir. thank you for coming on the corner today. Oh man, I'm so happy to be here. I, I want to have you back on. You know, in the Please. future, definitely. We're going to keep on expanding and growing this thing. And um, you know, if you if you want to catch some other things that we've been doing, where I'm on. Uh, Pej Intervention, that's my new TikTok page. We're killing it right now. We're, uh, we're, we're, there's a lot of content you know, in this recovery world of ours. And then uh, you, you, can, you can check me out on my uh, 
I have an Instagram. It's Pej Interventions. And, IG. And we're just going to keep on doing what we're doing and helping people and saving lives. I want to thank you. Because this man is everywhere. No, and you know that. <laughs> You're watching him right now. You know that. Get out of here. <laughs> so with that said, thank you all for coming to Peggy's Recovery